Good morning. It's great to be here at the OCP Global Summit. You've heard a lot today about sustainability. I think you're going to hear a lot throughout the rest of the day as well. And you've heard about some of the challenges of creating a sustainable data center using legacy technologies. I'm going to talk about how we can use new technologies to actually reduce our data center footprint. It's actually really simple. More compute with less power. And I'm going to talk about how these technologies are being made available today through the Open Compute Project. It goes without saying that the cloud has had numerous benefits in all aspects of our lives. Everything from drug discovery, remote work, staying in touch with loved ones. All of these areas have been made possible thanks to the advancements in the cloud. However, as you saw from Dharmesh, the rising energy consumption of the cloud is threatening the ability to continue to grow out the cloud footprint. Today, some hyperscale data centers consume as much as 100 megawatts. That's enough to power 80,000 US homes. In total, data centers consume as much power as some entire countries, such as South Africa. And these numbers are going to continue to grow unless we bring forth new solutions to reduce our, our footprint. A couple of real life examples. In West London, housing prices are soaring. There's a crisis. Sounds a little familiar, right, for those here who live in the Bay Area. There have been a number of multi unit housing projects planned. And when those projects were up for approval, it became evident that data centers that had moved into West London neighborhoods had actually consumed all available power on the grid. And those permits were put on hold until 2035 until additional power could be brought to the grid. So real life impact to folks in London and the UK. In Dublin, Irish power consumption for data centers has, in has increased by 144% in the five years leading up to 2020. And that power consumption is projected to grow to as much as 27% of Irish power by 2029. To put that in perspective, 36% of all households in Ireland are rural. The total power consumption of those households is less than the total power consumed by data centers in the country of Ireland. So as a result, local power operators have delayed many projects in the data center space, they put a de facto moratorium in place until new solutions can be found. Here in the US, in Oregon and Washington, on the Columbia River, water consumption, especially in the face of drought conditions, is of growing concern. And many projects have been put on hold until additional solutions can be found. So the list goes on and on. Real impact from increasing data center consumption. Now, everyone here in the room has done amazing work over the last decade or more to make many improvements, which is why we haven't faced a major crisis to date. We've seen major improvements in PUEs as more and more efficient ways of cooling data centers and more efficient power delivery systems have been developed. The consolidation into very, very efficient hyperscale data centers has also allowed for further improvements in sustainability. And data center operators have increasingly invested in and utilized more and more green power. But more needs to be done if we're to avoid the growing crisis in data center power consumption and overall sustainability. The continuing impact of increased power consumption, of water usage, and as Darmesh mentioned as well, the embodied carbon in all of that equipment and all of those data centers is a major problem. Now, it starts with the CPU itself. If you can deliver a CPU that delivers higher performance and higher capacity with less power, you can solve the problem at its core. It reduces the overall resource strain from a power perspective, from a thermal perspective, and from an equipment perspective. This isn't a fantasy. This isn't three to five years away. These solutions actually exist today. So instead of building your data centers over the next couple of years, building out more and more compute, and using legacy processors while doubling the power consumption of your data center, if you just switch to Ampere's cloud native processors, you could reduce your power consumption by 20% and still meet your compute needs. So just like the data center architecture and software, 
the hardware itself must be cloud native. Now, this is similar to the type of transition that happened a couple of decades ago as the transition from mainframes to a client server model occurred. First, the usage model changed. Then the software that was surrounding that usage model changed, adapted to become higher performance, more and more efficient. And then finally, the hardware changed as well. We're right in that transition right now. The move to cloud native has obviously happened from an architectural perspective. It's happened from a software perspective. And it's time for a new type of CPU, a cloud native processor, to be adopted in order to drive higher performance and better sustainability. So what's happened in the move to cloud native? Applications have become more and more distributed. They're shared amongst many, many users. Uh, infrastructure uh, is shared amongst many users, many applications. Workloads are scaling out. They're designed to be incredibly portable. They're broken down so that you can gain efficiencies by scaling out. Running one core in the cloud for 100 minutes costs the same amount as running 100 cores for one minute. So using that type of parallelism from the workloads themselves, from the architecture itself, you can get amazing efficiency. However, to realize that efficiency from a hardware perspective, you need hardware that's predictable that is elastic, that's efficient, hardware that delivers consistent performance to all users, that scales up and down based on demand, and that allows you to maximize the amount of compute you have without building more and more data center, more and more equipment. So to do this, cloud-native hardware, cloud-native processors, utilize a grounds-up, cloud-first approach to designing the CPU. They shed the baggage of a legacy architecture designed for older use cases. And it really changes the game in terms of sustainability. If we look at what a cloud-native architecture could provide to you, a cloud-native processor could provide to you versus what the legacy architectures are capable of, a cloud-native processor is able to run at nearly 100% utilization without sacrificing performance, without introducing unnecessary or undesirable impact from noisy neighbors. You can scale across 128 or even more cores to maximize your capacity. You can run at the lowest possible power with fully populated racks, not stranding capacity within your rack, not having invested in equipment that isn't fully utilized. And by running at the lowest power, you can reduce your thermal load and reduce the need to utilize complicated solutions that might force you to overhaul your entire data center. So highly utilized, you have scalable capacity, it's dense, and it's low power. The net result is a quantum leap in efficiency and the maximum performance per rack. So what's this really look like in practice? Here are a couple of examples of the differences that you might see and how this translates into amazing efficiency and sustainability. Three to four times better performance and efficiency. So no compromises. You can have both now, performance and efficiency. Consistent performance in the face of noisy neighbors. So no need for inefficient workarounds in order to preserve performance or security in your data center. Linear scalability, no diminishing returns, scaling all the way up to 128 or more cores. This allows you to run at 100% utilization instead of maybe at 30 to 50% in order to be able to adapt to peak capacity demands. This reduces the need for unnecessary data center buildouts and the lowest power consumption at all times. By not bumping up against the thermal constraints, we can deliver the highest performance without being pegged to TDP. Again, utilize the thermal solutions that you have today and multiply the impact of future thermal solutions that exist. The net result, no stranded capacity, thousands of additional cores per rack, the highest overall performance per rack for a wide range of, of cloud workloads like databases, web serving, media encoding, caching. What can you do with this? So either you could deliver two or three times more performance in your same rack and power envelope, the same footprint, or you could reduce your footprint, reduce your needs from a power consumption, from a water, from an equipment perspective. That's less builds. This opens up the edge as well with previously unattainable levels of performance at low power. We're seeing build outs from cloud to edge, edge deployments and distributed locations, in vehicles, those that are terrestrial, even those high up in the atmosphere. 
So, so this, op op this opens up a wide, wide range of possibilities. And we're seeing some of the results today. So HPE has launched their ProLiant RL300 Gen 11 servers based on the Ampere Ultra and Ampere Ultra Max processors. The tagline, more cores, less wattage, predictable performance. That results in the greenest possible solution. So they've really embraced this move to cloud-native computing and the sustainability benefits that it provides. Also, I think really interesting for those in this room, not only does that platform support the traditional HP ILO manageability, but it also supports OpenBMC for all of the open source enthusiasts in here. This makes it easier and easier for cloud providers or enterprise users to take advantage of this type of efficient cloud-native processor technology. Plus, by offering this up in GreenLake, they have a complete solution in the hybrid cloud space as well. So everything from multi-cloud running across many, many clouds to on-prem private cloud to hybrid usages. Cloud Sigma is one of those users. They're seeing amazing benefits. They're able to meet their sustainability goals. They're able to deliver lower costs to their customers. And Scaleway is able to take advantage of the technology from the Ampere Ultra processors by achieving higher and higher performance, which allows them to deliver a more efficient cloud. And it's not just HP. There's a wide range of platforms available today from Gigabyte, from Inspur, from Supermicro, from WeWin, and the HP platform that I mentioned. And these platforms are taking advantage of open source firmware, open BIOS, open BMC. And many of them are using the OCP mezzanine card as well. And you're going to be able to see these around the summit here over the next couple of days. So now we're at my favorite part. Last year, we contributed the Mount Jade platform for our Ampere Ultra and Ultra Max processors. We contributed the hardware and the firmware to make it easy for people to innovate on top of this cloud-native platform. We were, have been a contributing member of DCSCM 2.0. We're seeing really, really great momentum with this technology over the last couple of years, especially thanks to the community here within the Open Compute Project. So this year, I have another exciting announcement to make. So this year, we're contributing back our Mount Mitchell platform to OCP. This is our next generation cloud-native platform. It features DDR5, PCIe Gen 5, and it also features a bunch of the modular technologies that we were hearing about earlier. So this, uh, this supports the OCP uh, 3.0 NIC, uh, and then also it supports DCSCM 1.0. So these are the first pieces in being able to deliver that modular approach to server designs by bringing the manageability, the security, and the control to a discrete module. And that approach is really important to us. Um, we are also participating in and we're contributing to DC MHS 2.0. As you heard earlier, that type of interoperability is going to lead to faster innovation on disruptive technologies. So really excited about the work that's being done in that space. Also, the firmware, just like last year, the firmware is going to be made available to the community. So you'll be able to take this platform, adopt it, or adapt it to your own needs. Another important area that we're working in is uh, ARM System Ready. ARM System Ready, if you're not familiar with it, it's a program that allows you to test and then certify your platforms to ensure that the operating system and then the surrounding software just runs out of the box. So no worries when deploying the hardware in the data center. And today, we actually have 17 different Ampere platforms that are System Ready SR certified. Uh, we also have three cloud instances, those from Oracle, from Google, from Microsoft, that are System Ready VE certified. And so we will be bringing the Ampere servers into the OCP ARM System Ready Experience Center. That's going to allow more and more OEMs, ODMs, CSPs to certify their platforms as System Ready. It's also going to allow more OCP accepted and OCP inspired platforms to come to market. So really excited about the work that's being done there with the ARM System Ready Experience Center. And lastly, in the future, as a platinum member of Open Compute, Ampere is very dedicated to continue to bring new technologies, whether it's around DCSCM, DCMHS, continuing contributions around open firmware, and continue to drive more and more platforms for open and a sustainable cloud. 
So there's lots to demonstrate here. You can see here a number of our partners that have Ampere platforms deployed in their booths, demos, partners that are helping to build a green and a sustainable cloud. So be sure, check out their booths. Also, after the summit, these partners have our technology available firsthand, so you can check that out. You can also check it out in the OCP Experience Center. So as you continue to hear today about a sustainable cloud, just remember, sustainability starts at the core, and the best way to reduce your core power consumption is with green and sustainable processors with Ampere's cloud-native processors. So thank you, and have a great rest of the summit.